Hello and welcome to Collective Gifts. I'm Noella and this is Rachel. Hello everyone. This is day five of our family fast. <laughs> we are almost done with week one. Hallelujah. Yay. Yay. Yeah. So week one, we are covering Pono with God. And as you recall, Pono means righteousness. Today is day five, which we are going to talk about three truths that nullify lies about God. And so as you know, yesterday we talked about um, God disciplining us because he loves us. And as his heavenly father, he wants the best for us. And so he goes forth with disciplining us, not punishing us when we do bad behavior. So in other words, punishment is payback for when you do something bad, whereas discipline is more like training or teaching you so that you don't repeat that bad behavior. So you see there's a difference, right? Yes. And so that's what we want is we want God to discipline us because if we're veering off the wrong path, then that's going to lead to the worst possible outcome or to destruction. And so when God disciplines us, it brings us back on track to his perfect plan and his will for our lives. And so there are different times when God disciplines us. One of them is when obviously we sin against him. We violate his principles. And so that would also entail even when we have heart attitudes that are negative. And so he doesn't want us to go forth in harboring anything negative because that gets us off balance in our relationship with him. And that can affect our relationship with him and other people. So another time uh, when he disciplines us is when we're being prepared for promotion or he's taking us to a new level or a new season. We can't operate in the same ways that we did. You're going to have to refine and let go of the bad behaviors or bad habits so that we can go forth in um, becoming more righteous just like him as well as um, being able to have that opportunity to grow, to re reorganize or restructure the way that we're doing things so that we do things better. This week, we are covering Pono, and that's about having Pono with God, is having that balance in our relationship with God. And there is a term um, that ancient Hawaiians use. It's called Ho'oponopono. Pono. And what that means is you're getting back on track. So when you lose that balance, you get out of harmony with God, then you're going to do whatever it takes. You're going to make amends or you're going to take those steps to get back on track. Now, there's also some new agers that have some other woo kind of stuff. And we're not going to veer <laughs> off doing that because we follow the word of God. So we're not going to go off in that. We're just pulling out some of the concepts, which actually tie into what we, um, the word of God says as far as with um, getting back on track with God and getting into that Ho'oponopono or that harmony back. And so um, we'll cover more on that tomorrow. Today we're just going to kind of go over with those truths because we need to understand the truths about God so we no longer believe those lies because those yeah. lies hinder us from yeah. having that healthy relationship with God. And so it's healthy to identify lies that maybe you have believed about God then to be able to see what the truth, which comes from the word of God, because God's truth, it sets us free. Yes. And so that's what we want is we want to be able to go forth in that freedom. So I'm going to share three um, lies that we believed, and maybe you can relate to that. Or even um, as we're going on with sharing those lies, and Noel is going to go forth and sharing those truths, maybe it might trigger something in you to kind of think of a lie that you also believed about God. And that's what we want you to do today is to be able to identify those lies and those truths so that no more will you believe those lies, but go forth in God's truth. And you be set free. And in, in Jesus' name, yes, exactly. So the first lie is that you're not worthy to go forth, to go to church or to go forth and be blessed by God until you're perfect. And so to counteract that, it comes from Romans 5, verse 6. And this is the Amplified Version, which I love because it gives so much more detail than just mm -hmm. the you know NIV or New King James. So it says, while we were still helpless, powerless to provide for our salvation, at the right time, Christ died as a substitute for the ungodly. Now it is an extraordinary thing for one to willingly give his life for an, even for an upright man, Though perhaps for a good man, one who is noble and selfless and worthy, someone might dare to die. But God clearly shows and proves his own love for us by the fact that we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. 
And so we want to believe that because God, he doesn't want us to feel like we're not worthy. We are made worthy for yes. salvation. We are made worthy for the blessings that he has for us because he adopted us as his children once we became believers in Jesus Christ. And so he's given us so many benefits and wants a relationship with us. So he wants the best for us. We don't have to wait until we're perfect. He meets us where we're at and continues to go through that process of change. Now, the second lie that we believed was that God is a killjoy. He's like, no fun, right? Life is too hard and being a Christian means you have to suffer and be poor and not be blessed. And have a boring life. Yes, and, and that's going forth and being um, you know, humble before the Lord. And what's the truth to that? So from John 10, 10, it says the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So the enemy does everything that he in his power to kind of just deceive you into thinking, oh, the Christian life is a boring life. It is just, you know, nothing really compared to just living out there in the world. And having it easy, right? Yeah. And doing what you want. Actually, no, we thank God for his principles because it helps us get through different situations. And as a matter of fact, God's not a killjoy. He's fun. When we go forth in ministering for the Lord um, and just allowing him to create these divine appointments, it, I call it God ventures. Like they're God adventures yes. where it's amazing to see what God does and how he is able to minister to someone using us when we make ourselves available because it's not about our ability, but our availability. And as far as with us living a life that's in poverty or being poor or struggling or suffering, it's like, no, because God gave us everything we need to live in success and to go forth in victory after victory after victory of every obstacle, trial, setback, delay that we have in our life. And what that does is it helps us make us stronger, better, wiser, whole and complete in our faith so that now we know God and the word more for ourselves. And when we go forth in applying God's principles, we'll see the blessings of it and the blessings of the Lord. It makes us rich, right? It adds no sorrow yes. with it. Like God is so good with, with just giving us a life that is abundant, that is full with him because he gave us everything wholeheartedly so that we can live an abundant and satisfied, purpose-filled life. And so, you know, one of the things is like, this whole week I've been seeing El Shaddai. And so we know El Shaddai means the God who is more than enough. Mm -hmm. It's not just enough or just, you know, a little bit more than enough, but more than enough. So it just shows you that he is not a God who just will allow you to live a life with just, you know, having enough to just pay off your bills or whatever it is that you want. But he is more than enough. Ooh, hallelujah. Because he does exceedingly, abundantly, above yes. all we can ever ask, think, or imagine. Hallelujah. And so the third lie that we believed, which hindered us from having that harmony in our walk and to continue to grow, was it's okay that some people can hear from God. You know, some people have that close relationship like, wow. from him. Yeah. <laughs> But maybe not for us. He's only chosen a few select people. <laughs> <laughs> and what does the truth say about that? So this, there's two scriptures. So the first is from um, John, John 10, John 10 27. Yeah. It says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And so, you know, we, we know that we know God's voice. Everyone can hear God. He's speaking to each and every one of us. He's not um, specifically chosen like, oh, this apostle or this, this prophet, you know, he only speaks to them. No, he speaks to every one of us. And so the second one is from Jeremiah 33, 3. It says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, which you do not know. Hallelujah. Which means, is he going to talk to some people? No. no, if you call to him, he will speak to you. <laughs> I love that. And so all we have to do is cultivate that relationship with God. The more we know him, the more we'll be able to hear him and discern what's his voice, what is the world's or the enemy, or what is our flesh speaking. And what we really need to do is have that foundation of knowing the word of God, because that is God's voice. And when we um, compare what we hear to the word of God, if it doesn't match up,
God's not going to tell you to break his rules and violate his laws. God's going to tell you something that aligns with his word because that's his character, right? We talked about righteousness. He is righteous. He can only be righteous. And even when we're not righteous, he'll still be righteous. And so we can trust that the word is truth. It's the final authority on all matters. And so I just wanted to share one more scripture just to tie everything together. In 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17, it says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And that's what we're doing. We're training in righteousness so that the servant of God, which is us, we may be able to um, be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And that's what God wants us. He wants us to go forth in success in every good work that he ordained for us. And so for today, we want you to reflect, you know, as we shared those lies and those truths, you know, do you desire to live Pono? Do you desire to have that balanced, um, righteous life as well as having that healthy relationship with God where you're in harmony? And if so, identify some lies that you may believe and find the truth in the word to break those lies down so that they no longer have a power over you. Because the truth sets you free. Exactly. Because the truth sets you free. Yes. And so we want to thank you all for joining us to this day for day five of our family fast. And if this video ministered to you, then we encourage you to share it with other people so that they too can understand God's truths so that they can nullify those lies about him. Hallelujah. So they can go forth in knowing him on a greater level. God bless you all, and we will see you tomorrow. Shaloha. Shaloha.